So in this video, I'm going to talk about vertex painting and getting objects from Maya into Unreal and actually being able to vertex paint on them. So a couple of things that I've noticed, it's a little quirky, so we'll talk about those quirks as we go along. So the first things I've done is just I've created a mesh that just has a bunch of subdivisions, 50 by 50, it's just a plane, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, one-sided, good to go. I just export this thing out and send it into Unreal. All right, so over here inside of Unreal, I've gone ahead and imported in that plane, and I did not have it create any materials. So let's just go ahead and grab it and drag it in. So this is that plane. Let's go ahead and open up the Vertex Painting tool. So up here inside of Modes, I'm just come down and open up my Mesh Paint. Inside of here, we're going to stick with the Colors area, and I'm going to go ahead and say Paint, and now we can see that we've got all of our painting tools over here. By default, Red, Green, and Blue, and Alpha are turned on. I'm not going to use Alpha, so I'm just going to turn that off for right now. So now let's go ahead and create our material. And this is where some of the quirky stuff starts to kind of come in here. So inside of surfaces, I'm going to go ahead and filter this down to just my material instances. This only works with material instances, just so you know. So inside of mega scans, I'm going to go ahead and name this one uh, material blend ground, and I'm going to put it in my own materials folder. So I've got it nice and organized. Go ahead and hit create. It says two or more must be selected. So let's go ahead and select a couple of these. And then I'm going to hit it. Now, I'm going to stop right here because this is one of the quirky things. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, if I use these ones straight here out of the mega scans, this thing will set up the material perfect, and I don't have to actually touch anything else. But if I'm using my own material instances, there's something that we need to be kind of aware of. So let's take a look at the material instances that I'm using and how we need to fix it should we use them. Let's go into the materials here, and I'm going to turn the instance off. I'm going to go into my master one here. And inside of here, let's get this out of the way, you'll see that I have just a texture attached to just the base color. I don't have anything else fancy. I don't need anything fancy for this demo. This is exactly what I'm using. Now, because of this, I believe that this is where this quirky thing kind of happens. So let me show you what happens. So inside of here, I've got these three material instances. Let's go ahead and bring this back over. And with these ones selected, I'm going to go ahead and say create material blend. And boom, it goes ahead and creates this. Now, this if it was using the mega scans, would be completely populated and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But because I'm using something very simple in here, I do have to come in here and actually populate this, which is kind of a bummer, but it does give us a little bit of control. So let's kind of talk about some of the things going on. I'm going to close up the base settings and displacement and the fuzzy and the G settings. So input textures. So you'll notice that it didn't actually populate the textures in here for my material. So I need to come in here and do this for it. So let's just go ahead and make the dirt, the top one up here. Whoops, let's go ahead and turn that on. And then under base, so this is going to be like black or no vertex color at all whatsoever. And then underneath our green, let's go ahead and put in our grass. And what I've noticed, this isn't actually green. It's actually blue, the blue channel. Again, I'm not sure why, but this is what happens. And then underneath red, go ahead and grab the mud and grab this one. And this one is actually white. So just kind of keep that in mind. So it's not you know, red and green. It's actually black, blue, and white. These are the quirky things I would love to hear if you guys have got a way to figure out why it's doing this, or maybe I'm just missing something, but let me know. All right, let's go ahead and save that one. Close that down. And now let's go ahead and grab that material, this guy, and I'm gonna go ahead and place it onto this plane. Now, obviously you don't wanna just drag and drop it. Obviously you don't wanna come over here. You do wanna come into the static mesh and actually drop it in here. So that way it's on every static mesh that you ever play with. So I'll just drop that on there. Oh, looks like it's gonna freeze. So I'll pause the video until it's done thinking. All right, so after a quick restart, because it decided to crash, now just freeze. Let's go ahead and start playing with this. So we can paint with white on top of here. Okay, and I can also just fill it with white too. So if I click this, that just fills all these vertices with white. Let's go ahead and reverse this. You can hit the swap colors up here. You can press X on the keyboard too. So I can swap that and I'm gonna say fill and that just fills everything with black, which is cool. So this works. I'm gonna go ahead and start with everything black so there aren't any vertex colors on here at all whatsoever. So let's go ahead and swap that back. Now I'm painting with red, green, and blue. So this is white, so I can click and drag and you can see, start to get this white color on these vertices. So that's what's actually painting in here is this mud. So this is that white. Okay. So let's change this. So I'm only painting with the blue. You don't actually have to change this up here. You notice these are all at one. And then I start to get this grass in here. So this is the blue channel right here. Now here's something that's kind of interesting. If I paint on here and I try to go over this other area, this mud, it's not actually letting me do that. So let's go ahead and turn all the colors back on. So I can paint that mud over it. And then if I switch these, 
There we go. Then I can start to paint this in here too. So like I said, there's some there's some quirky things that are kind of going on in here. It's not always so great. And you did notice that I actually didn't turn that red off there, but I can just turn this. Oh, this is black. So let's swap this. So white, but only with the blue. And I can get this, but I can't paint on top of that darkest color in there, that white. I can't paint on it. So it's always worth it to kind of come in here, switch these guys, paint in black, and kind of think about where you want to put them. Like I said, it's a little quirky. I've found a real straightforward way to get this to work for me. But if you guys have got a way to make this work, please let me know, because I would love to hear. Uh, these quirks are totally workable, but I feel like there's some kind of hacking and extra thinking that you have to do. Especially as an artist, I just want to kind of like put stuff out there instead of kind of thinking about, oh yeah, the green and then the blue and the, you know, it's kind of weird. There are other ways to make vertex shaders out there. There's some pretty cool videos. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. Thank you much.